Not only the wealth, but the independence and security of a country appear to be materially connected with the prosperity of manufactures. Every nation ought to endeavor to possess within itself all the essentials of a national supply. These comprise the means of subsistence, habitation, clothing, and defense. Report on Manufactures, 1791. Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of the Treasury. For more than 200 years, America followed Hamilton's vision. By the eve of World War I, the United States was the most prosperous nation on earth, with the highest standard of living. We produced 96% of all we consumed and exported 8% of our GNP. We manufactured more than Britain, France, and Germany combined. We became the innovation and production capital of the world. For 90 years, we had the largest manufacturing sector in the world. That ended last year. Great American Inventions Two-thirds of all R&D is directly linked to manufacturing. In 1950, 33% of our labor force was in manufacturing. Today, only 9% of U.S. jobs are in manufacturing. That's 11.5 million Americans. Twice as many Americans are employed by the government. Since 2000, we have lost 33% of all our manufacturing jobs. In 1960, the largest U.S. employers were manufacturers. GM, Ford, U.S. Steel, Bethlehem Steel, ITT, Westinghouse, General Dynamics, Chrysler, Sperry Rand, International Harvester were among them. Today, only three of the top 15 U.S. employers are manufacturers. And they make almost everything abroad. Between 1999 and 2009, U.S.-based multinational corporations lost 2.9 million U.S. employees, a loss the size of the population of Kansas. They hired 2.4 million overseas employees over the same time period. Today, the largest employer in the United States is Walmart. The fifth largest is McDonald's. The sixth largest is Taco Bell. Since 2001, the U.S. has lost a total of 56,000 manufacturing facilities. While U.S. multinationals' exports are increasing, their imports are increasing at an even faster rate. Between 1982 and 2008, their imports increased 536%. In 1997, less than 14% of the computers bought by American consumers were imported. Last year, 85% of computers bought in America were imported. In 1960, foreign goods made up just 8% of Americans' purchases. Today, nearly 60% of everything we buy is made overseas. The Martin Luther King statue on the Washington Mall is made in China. The glass in the New World Trade Center in New York is made in China. The steel in the New World Trade Center in New York is made in Germany. The San Francisco Bay Bridge is made in China. From 1990 to 2010, the manufacturing trade deficit soared more than eightfold to $636.78 billion. In 2011, the manufacturing trade deficit was more than 14% bigger than the overall deficit and nearly twice as big as the oil trade deficit. In 1989, the United States ran a nearly $28 billion trade surplus in high-tech manufacturers. By 2002, this surplus had become a $16.6 billion deficit. 
The United States has had a negative trade balance every single year since 1976. Since that time, the U.S. has run a total trade deficit of $7.5 trillion with the rest of the world. The U.S. loses approximately 9,000 jobs for every $1 billion of goods that are imported from overseas. When China joined the WTO in 2001, the U.S. had a high technology trade deficit with China of about $5 billion. In 2011, once all the numbers are counted, it will be $109.36 billion. Our overall trade deficit with China in 2011 was $295 billion. That's more than the gross domestic product of most U.S. states. The GDP of Indiana is $245 billion. The GDP of Connecticut is $211 billion. Manufacturing is a critical issue in key swing states. What is the rest of the world doing while this is happening? China has about 100 million people at work in manufacturing. This is more than the manufacturing employees in the United States, Canada, Japan, Germany, France, Italy, the UK, Taiwan, Australia, Netherlands, and Sweden combined. If the U.S. could bring 10% of Chinese manufacturing jobs back to America, our unemployment rate would be 2%. China has the largest paper industry in the world, but they have no pulp and no indigenous forests left. They ship in pulp from Chile and Brazil, make paper outside Shanghai, ship it to the United States, and sell it in Chicago for less than the paper producers in Wisconsin. How can they do that? The Chinese government gives their paper companies free land, low-cost loans, low-cost electricity, large-scale grants, tax breaks, duty exemptions, and a 40% currency benefit. When you go to almost any foreign government and tell them you want to put a plant in their country, they say, we will give you everything. When you go to the U.S. government, well, actually, there's nowhere to go in the U.S. government. CEO of a major U.S. high-tech manufacturer. What countries have a national manufacturing strategy? Japan, Korea, Israel, Singapore, China, Germany, and Finland, among others. What country does not? the United States. The President and Congress can make a difference. Policy recommendations to bring about a renaissance of American manufacturing. Enforce our trade laws. Offset currency undervaluation by the Chinese. Create an economic development fund. Encounter foreign subsidies. Create a Secretary of Manufacturing. The next President whether it is Obama or someone else, can do this. Manufacturing is just not for exports. Recapture the American market. Recapture the American spirit.